Hi folks, welcome to Bird Dogs Afield and welcome to our sixth episode of Bird Dog Questions and Answers. This is meant to help you with questions you may have about your bird dog and help you solve that question. With us today as our usual experts are Blaine and Patty Carter. Thank Welcome you. Blaine and Patty. Thank you. And uh, we really appreciate them being here. They are truly at the top of their game. They've been training dogs for many, many years. They, they've trained thousands of dogs and they know bird dogs. So let's get started <coughs> with today's episode. We're gonna cover uh, what you do with a puppy. What do you do with a puppy? It comes home at eight weeks, and uh, then what do you do? So I think Patty's gonna start us off with that. She's kind of the puppy expert. Patty, tell me some of the things we need to think about with our puppy. Well, as far as the, we're gonna talk about the, the, the beginning, initial part of the hold, and, and just part of that. They have many different segments of training during the day, but this one is an important one um, because they, if you have a breeder that's been, um, has sort of done the, the homework, the base work, the puppies like to see things go out. They don't always come back, but they like to chase it out. So that's how you know I like to, to start a puppy. So when you bring your puppy home, I encourage each person to hand feed their puppies. So hand, hand, feed. hand feed. So breakfast is coffee cup here, bowl of food here, and my puppy in my lap. And then I just put a couple fingers in their mouth and, and, and work at it. It's a battle at first, but once they learn to stop the battle, the fingers go away and they get a treat. It, it works, it, it goes pretty quick. So that's- You pretty, look confused. <laughs> no, I'm not confused. That's pretty interesting. I've never, I've never heard of that technique. Yeah, it's, yeah. It, yeah, and you know, be, I mean, the food part or the, or the hold part? No, both actually. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so, mother. What, what's the What's the goal there? The goal is to establish the word hold or the process hold. There's no word when you start. To relax when the fingers are in the mouth. If, you, if sometimes you would move to a glove, you know, a gloved hand versus fingers as they get a little bigger, because they don't really. Some puppies just like, what do you put your hand in my mouth? So just a a, a really light glove, and then they're not feeling like they're biting you. And, you know, and Blaine brought up the subject that this also is great at teaching bite inhibitors young with the puppies. But my, my goal is to teach them to hold. So after the battle is over, when it usually is only a one day, like, what are you doing this in my mouth? Then we sit at the table, like I said, and, and every day we do it for breakfast. That is their first class of the day, is food. Mother has been the giver of all up to the point you get that puppy. She's right. given warmth, food, and uh, nurturing. Yes. And she's taught the puppy lots if she's been able to stay with the puppy till they've gone home. Um, so food is amazing. So now you own it, mom's gone, so you own the most important resource they have is food. So they're gonna work for it. So that, that helps you in the process of teaching hold. So you go, do it pretty quickly and and they hold it stop the fight and I, and you give it away so we say hold 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 or fetch you pick a word that doesn't matter really what word they yeah. see the process yeah. they're reading the behavior and then to get rid of it you say drop release out whatever you choose for a word so basically behind the canines is good in front of the canines is bad and once they realize behind the canines they get the reward They'll, 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 and they'll like fight, 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 fight. As soon as they stop, as soon as they stop. So as soon as they think about stopping, you give them the release command. They get rid of it. So you just teach them how to get rid of your hand. That's the basics. Hmm. <laughs> oh, it's really, really good. It's, it's the beginning shaping process, you know, for a young dog, and it also is the beginning of teaching a young dog how to change thought. You know, I, I want it, I want it, I want, no, no, you have to work for it. You have to change your thought. Well, well how's that work? I mean, how does, you think of it from the, the, the young little puppy, his urges to want to eat and feed and whatever, and, 
and you if he over oh, gets over aggressive with his mouth and you go ow and you say no you need to hold uh, you're teaching him you know the, the basics of of how to get rid of pressure how to get rid of your training thought how to, how to change a thought and it's a real real intricate little way of uh, without without any any bad you know connotations to it it's really a neat little process yeah and then we go from the hand to a little tiny the little have you seen little pink paint rollers they're yeah, both sure. yeah, yeah yeah so we go to that so you know, there's no harm being done there's no aggression to the mouth they're littles they're little they're young you can't hurt anything with that so that's the next step or a small pen or something as you're sitting at your your breakfast table and you know um, or you sit on the floor if it's not comfortable if you hold a squirming puppy you just go to the floor mm -hmm. it's kind of neat too to watch as you watch this in action should have like a paint roll in it and, and the puppy will 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 be holding it but the whole time he's holding it he'll kind of go well how about that jar over there <laughs> <laughs> you know it's time it's time you get your hand in that jar now <laughs> yeah. you know yeah. so they're they so working see, for you that see, treat. and as soon as i say that. drop they're ready they're ready to grab that treat you know out of my hand or hand it to them so this is a very early step it is in the the uh, uh, force fetch training in the whole process it's the yep. whole process and yeah. the whole process when you have little puppies i said you have the luxury of time there is no rush here if you it, don't get frustrated it'll look a little bit better tomorrow then it'll look a little bit better the next day yeah. so yeah. you have months of training because yeah. some people don't start till they have teenagers with opinions you know with attitudes and then they have a battle so if you get this whole process done they love to put something in their mouth and then you can actually have them run around and chase it but <laughs> yeah this process takes several months so yeah it, it, but what you've started with here will uh, cut down the future force fetch training uh, I have just to tell you <laughs> Etta we go back to my Etta but when we we you know she was born in in march so hunting season came in in october and she was you know six seven months old and i had not done anything but hold you know and i wasn't really expecting a whole lot as far as retrieving but we had a few options to retrieve shot birds for her and she did fine but there was no force up to that point so we came home for some trip in november and i said blaine i think i ought to do the whole the force with Etta you know she's never been forced and I've got a little opportunity I'm gonna go down in the basement and get my little equipment out and yeah. do the ear pinch the force and I came upstairs 10 minutes later and I said I think I'm done <laughs> oh, no. can you come down and proof to see if I'm done and she if I even thought in my head that I was gonna go to her ear she was lunging for that Is bumper that to right? shut off the pressure Oh my goodness! It, 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 it is. It was truly amazing. But that, when they understand hold and it's not a bad thing, they move through it and they they've done. Then you move to that force and it's it's it, it, and honest. It's, and you'll see some neat little things. One of the things is well, if I that that connection between that just that food and something in their mouth, uh, of course they always are going to get into something with their mouth. And the worst thing we could ever do with a, a young dog is correct him for use, uh, especially one you're going to use for retrieving, correct his want to use his mouth. Well, they'll get things, and they'll come to you, naturally come to you with it. You haven't taught them come. I mean, they're just little puppies. But they get something in their mouth, and they come running to you because they've made the association, right? And you, you teach them to release you know, sometimes a little more difficult than others. You might have to put a little piece in there for it to like, no, wait a minute, you don't own it here yet. So that's where the food comes in. They're willing to give up for something. So you can make these neat little behavioral c connections before you get into a whole package. That's pretty interesting. I've, I've just never heard of that technique. And uh, I think it's very revealing. I, I really do, and, and very innovative. Uh, only took I mean, 40 yeah. years. <laughs> <laughs> so, Puppies are sponges. You know that, that first, oh, that second oh two goodness. months of life after you send them off to their homes. They learn so fast and so willing, and, and then the, it slows down at that point. You know, 16 weeks, and it's like, 
little bit slower. But yeah. that eight to sixteen weeks, it's it's so much fun to watch them. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So, if if that is done successfully, then you said you know you came up from downstairs and told Blaine you think you're finished. I mean, there may not be a whole lot more then to that process. Uh, well, we, we, did, <clears throat> we did find a hole or two <laughs> during, hunt, during hunting season where they said, yeah. So then you may have to do a little bit more of the whole, the, the force. If you, as you're progressing along, if you find that, you know, they say, no, I don't want to do it. You've got the tool in your pocket, which is your, your ear pinch yeah. to say, you got to do it. But you have to understand with the young dog, to me anyways, with the young dog, that hold, where is the security in force train retrieving? If you ha when you go to that force for the pickup and for the go or whatever, you, for that f function, uh, what do they have to fall back on? If you try to do the hold and then lead it immediately into the pin, there's no security in that for the young dog. Where, where, where you said I, you want it, 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 the cliche is, I'm going to get rid of the pressure. Well, how do you get rid of the pressure? They've got to have something to fall back on, right? So if they find it secure to have something in their mouth, right, you're not fighting having to hold it as well as go for it. And so it makes the clarity in the development is, is clearer. Hmm. Very interesting. I, <laughs> <laughs> Time yeah. for a puppy. Yeah. So... You know that twelve-week mark. You could you could have a pup that's already retrieving for you. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Well, honestly, in the morning when I have my coffee, when the puppies are in the litter, um, I'm sitting on their dog bed. You know, yeah. big fluffy dog bed <clears throat> with lots of toys. Yeah. I like Beanie Babies. He hates Beanie Babies because they some <laughs> sometimes leak, but. <laughs> Um, I like them because they make a noise when they hit the floor. So I've got a whole pile of Beanie Babies with me, and I just toss them, and they run out. And, the, and occasionally one will come back, not all the time, yeah. but that's okay. The, the comeback with something is down the road. But just the idea of going out and the attention and understanding, you know, what I'm doing there is, is pretty cool. Well, this is, this is definitely the Carter uh, <laughs> train retrieve system. Stop. Yeah, it's you good. Go. It's good. It's, it's a, good. It's a you know, stop. I just didn't, I didn't like studying on young dogs, you know, too harshly like, right. like yeah. the system we, we've seen and we've watched. <clears throat> and I don't, I don't see any lack of the ability to work with the yeah. done this way versus, you know, the hard force. We have the teenager fighting the whole way down the road. And a lot of people think they need to establish the dominancy over the dog with that process. Well, they got a whole, they, I mean, there's a whole lifetime of, of, of creating that dominancy, you know, after that 16 week period. There's gonna be legs gonna come under him. He's gonna be starting to make a decision could have a subordinate male that might be a little more testy than others. Uh, there's all kinds of little things where you're going to put an applied pressure to at some point in his life. But in that molding period, in that, that, that first 16 weeks of his age, is such a, because it's very dependent on you at that age. And we'll almost do anything. They just, just I kind of like to uh, put the, show me, just show me what you want period and 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 that's the I think we don't take advantage of that quite as well as we should hmm. Blaine I'm gonna mention something that you said to me many years ago uh, you send your dog for retrieve and sometimes they start playing with the bird and you told me I believe and correct me if I'm wrong I believe you said one answer to that is having a good recall oh if as soon as you see that, and you've got a good recall, you recall your dog. Is that, you still stand by that? Oh, well, I even stand by it and put it right back into <clears throat> Patty's. When she said she, 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 the feeding, we also work recalls into our feeding process. For oh, you, you do? Right as a puppy. You take that bowl, you're hand feeding. Remember, she was yeah. discussing hand feeding. All you've got to do is, is, you can play with this. No, you stay. He wants, no, I'm coming for the food. No, you stay. And you get off a few steps. You got the bowl in your hand. And you teach that puppy. 
I bet you uh, it will be almost automatic. You tell the puppy to come, he'll, he doesn't know what come is, so you'll make a come je gesture, give yeah. him some body English, and he'll come running right to you, and then you hold the food up. And he'll say, no, I want that food. And he'll immediately put himself down, right? Well, I, I'm not going to get into a whole dissertation on never teach a dog to sit before. before. We've already done that. <laughs> We've already done it. <laughs> well, I, I think episodes. this will explain it. <laughs> and so you get the dog to, 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 to wait a little bit. Now he's coming. Well, you, you're feeding these puppies three times a day, so it, you figure that's about a 10-minute segment of just in your feeding ritual that you can actually be doing some some, some yeah. critical training. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody asked me, I was talking to him, telling him about feeding, and he hadn't done it. He had a teenager dog, so he needed to establish some dominancy over the dog. You know, he had to be higher up on the pecking order because yeah. I think the dog wasn't. And he goes, how long does this take? You know, it looked like he was one morsel at a time going down the road. I said, oh, no, no, you can make it as fast or as short as you want, <laughs> but you own the resource, you know. And so yeah. that, that was his project, to gain a little bit of authority there. So we eventually, you know, she'll take it. I mean, we'll put him on the place board, this little puppy, get him to stay on a place board. You have two place boards, maybe they're only six or eight feet apart. And you said, no, you stay there and you go to the other place board and wherever the position you want that dog to go, you could be to the front, you want a front delivery, then stand in the back of the place board. So he hits the place board, hold off the food, boom, he's down. And then you go, oh, that's a good dog. You take him off, put him back, <coughs> no, nope, you stay. So now you're getting a remainder piece, you're getting you know, there's all kinds of these little coordinated pieces that are going there with no negativity. They have to figure out, they're, they're, they're learning to figure out how yeah. it goes. So they're yeah. changing behaviors. They're learning yeah. to change behaviors, yeah. right? Yeah. You've, got, you've got plenty of time to get into corrective action. You, right now, this is creative. So now you've got them going from place board to place board, and then we do intermittent training where now you take them, put them on one place board, and then you stand off the place board, and then he still hits the same position. So now you start mocking that. So you... You're actually training in your recall work, just in your feeding regimen. Fantastic. <laughs> well, that is uh, very revealing and very innovative. <laughs> we want to thank uh, Lane and Patty for, for this morning's uh, episode. This is episode number six of our Q&A series. And thank you to both of you. <laughs> I found that very, very educating. Thank you. Thank it's you. Fun. It's a fun thing. Bird Dogs Afield, presented by Native Performance Dog Food, and brought to you in part by Pete Shoe Dryer, Mud River Dog Products, and Tim Pond Wilderness Camps.